Russia's space program, well, they've seen better days. Its decline is perhaps best embodied in the Soyuz spacecraft. Once that ever-dependable go-to vessel for ferrying both NASA and Roscosmos astronauts to the International Space Station. And now the subject of public scrutiny after numerous high-profile failures. Soyuz recently back on Earth with no crew, even a private company can do better than that. And it's a grim decline into decrepitude. Let's find out all about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As planned, the leaky Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft cast off from its docking port at the ISS without any astronauts aboard, a rarity for Russia's Roscosmos space program at 5.57 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The anomaly occurred because in December, a Soyuz dock to the ISS started leaking and spraying coolant uncontrollably, causing temperature in the cabin to rise to unsafe levels. Roscosmos simply chalked it up to bad luck blaming the failure on a micrometeorite strike. Two months later in February, the scenario repeated itself, this time on a Roscosmos Progress cargo ship launched aboard a Soyuz rocket. A coolant loop sprang a leak yet again, this time causing the ship to depressurize. The incident was similarly blamed on a micrometeorite strike. Now, if you think two micrometeorite strikes in close succession are too much of a coincidence, your instincts may be right. Anatoly Zak, who created and runs the publication Russian Space Web, said that the odds of that happening are very close to zero, considering that somehow only the cooling system were damaged both times. And let's not forget another Soyuz back in 2018 also sprang a leak due to a hole drilled in one of the compartment walls, which may have been present before its launch. With three spacecraft leaks in five years, the agency's usefulness to NASA is waning, with SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft looking like a compelling long-term replacement. What we're seeing is the continuing demise of the Russian civil space program. That from Bruce McClintock, he's head of RAND Corporation's Space Enterprise Initiative. He added that the frequency of the spacecraft failures, quote, point to an overall decline of the Russian civil space program. The Soyuz MS-22 returns to Earth filled with science experiments that can withstand its high internal temps. It's also carrying old navigation modules, Russian Orlin spacesuit sleeves, TV cameras, and other gear. A recovery team will retrieve the Soyuz capsule after landing so it can be studied to better understand how this coolant leak occurred, as well as what a landing without coolant is going to add in future missions. Back on Earth, however, Roscosmos is apparently drowning in so much debt they can't even pay the rent. The agency relies on the Baknor Cosmodrome, one of the world's foremost spaceports in Kazakhstan, to launch all those crewed missions, which include bringing NASA astronauts to the ISS. But whether it will continue using Baknor now seems in jeopardy. Last week, a fed-up Kazakh government seized all of Roscosmos' assets since the agency reportedly owes the government a substantial amount of money for using the spaceport. Getting off the ground may yet prove to be a major hindrance, but maintaining its crude foothold in space isn't looking any better either. The ISS is set to be decommissioned by 2030, and none of the commercially operated but NASA-backed space stations set to replace it, or chain brand spanking new Yangon Space Station for that matter, Involve Roscosmos and its plans of building a space station of its own remain unconvincing. For now, Russia seems more focused on military applications of its space technology at the expense of its civilian pursuits, potentially deorbiting the U.S. and Russia's long-standing cooperation in space and sending it tumbling towards a watery grave in the depths of Point Nemo. Beyond launch problems and coolant leaks, Russia's civil space program faces another problem, the ISS. For the past quarter of a century, the stations provided a critical tie between U.S. and Russian space programs. But that's winding down, along with plans to retire the giant structure altogether. NASA's investing in next-generation commercial space stations, with modules scheduled to arrive in orbit as early as 2030. Russia has no role in these commercial concepts, nor in China's new Chiangong station. Last July, Yuri Borisov, the head of Roscosmos, claimed that Russia would withdraw from the ISS, effectively ending the station's lifetime in 2028 when Russia would launch its own space station. And this February, the state-owned TASS news agency confirms that Russia plans on supporting the ISS through 2028, 
timing that depends on the deployment of a new Russian orbital station. Pavel Luzin, a senior fellow at the Jamestown Foundation, that's a think tank focused on China, Russia, and Eurasia, is skeptical. He's not aware of any new space station models, crewed spacecraft, or launch vehicles in the works. It would be optimistic for Russia to even launch a new station in the 2030s, he adds. Russia is not the Soviet Union, says Luzin, who's also a visiting scholar at Tufts University's Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Russia will be able to make some large vehicles and so use spacecraft. Russia will be able to launch some satellites, but it will not be an advanced space power. It will not be making steps beyond low Earth orbit. Yet through the support of an emerging space superpower, Russia still has plans for the moon. In 2021, Chinese and Russian officials announced they would partner to set up a research station on the lunar South Pole in the 2030s. Lots of work will precede that base, though. First, China has embarked on a series of robotic missions to collect data and scope out potential landing spots. The next of those, Shang'e 6, includes a lander and sample return mission and is planned for 2025. Russia's first robotic mission for the program, Luna 25, has been delayed for years, but could finally launch in July. That lander would prove a crucial test for Roscosmos, whose handful of missions beyond Earth orbit since the late 1980s have fared poorly. The mostly Mars-focused probes either failed to leave Earth orbit or didn't reach their destination. That track record compared to the success of China's ramped-up space program is a reason for skepticism about the Chinese-Russian collaboration, says Zach. Why would China cooperate with Russia when the Russian space program is in a weaker state, he said. The mismatch in technical capability is so huge, I don't see what China would get from this. While China may have political reasons for collaborating with Russia, its space program has little to gain from working with its Russian counterpart. As its civil space program collapses, Russia's been heavily investing in its military one. The company has highly developed anti-satellite weapons, including a missile system tested in November 21 that generated thousands of bits of debris in orbit. So have previous tests by the U.S., China, and India, leading to an international call for a moratorium on those. Russia also has used electronic weapons against space systems and has been testing laser weapons that could be used against satellites. Russia appears to have tested a potential weapon prototype in 2019 and 2020 with a nesting doll-like spacecraft, Cosmos 2543, which released a sub-satellite in orbit says Victoria Sampson, the Washington office director for the Secure World Foundation, a nonpartisan think tank. Like McClintock, Sampson says Russia's back-to-back -back technical issues are a worrisome sign for its civil space program, and so is the likelihood that it may soon be without a space station. There's a national prestige factor for countries with space programs, she says. The Soviet Union may have put the first human into space, but now, 60 years later, Russia faces a near future which it's no longer able to do that. That is a slide. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.